Sylvia was one of the very first members of the Official Shemirian Society, and we'd like to get her viewpoints on how it all started. How it all started? Uh, well, I had cross-dressed for years, since a teenager. Um, we moved to, to Australia in 66, and after, after a while we carried on dressing, but there was nowhere to go. And then suddenly this advertisement in the Sunday paper, um, it was couched in the form of the four girls who, who announced themselves at t as TVs were asking for new members. And I, I just simply wrote, or I might even, even have phoned, and I was asked to attend, which, which I did. And uh, that, as far as I know, was, was the first organised meeting of TVs in Perth, in our time anyway. So who, who actually was the founder of the first um, It was a very good person by the name of Barbara, Barbara Burroughs. Um, we met at her, her house. It was she who put the advertisement in the paper, uh, to which we had all answered. There were, there were about six when I first went, went along. Uh, was the society initially heterosexual and No, it, it was exclusively heterosexual. Yeah. Yes. Did the, um, did the society affiliate with the Seahorse with the Eastern States at any time? Um, not straight away, but we soon um, got to know of the Seahorse and correspondence was passed to and fro. Um, they did. They did suggest ideas how to run our society, which we, I think they must have taken their advice because we seem to run along on quite a smooth lines. For the purposes of our friends overseas, could you explain why we use the term comedian? Yes, well, uh, we had no name in those first early days and then it was, it was running so successfully that, that, that we decided to form a definite society and someone came up with the word uh, chameleon which is as we all know it's a small reptile that can change its color and we thought if we were male and were then female that we were doing similar things so it seemed very appropriate. How, how long did the social group continue for? I would say for four or five years until um, the unfortunate demise of, of Barbara. Uh, then I left about that time, but I, I d don't think it stayed on much longer. Were there any breakaways or situations where people were dissatisfied with the original the concept of the group? Yes, there were. That happened fairly early on. There were so many... Um, the. Members were a complete cross-section. Some had, had been dressing for years and others were new to it. So therefore you, you had those that wanted to venture out and uh, perhaps go places to a restaurant and those that weren't quite as confident to do so. So therefore there were some who did want to branch out and go. And this was not really the wish of, of Barbara at that time. So in effect, the society went into, into sort of a, a decline until possibly about 1983 closed as well? I think, Nicky, it was probably 82. Right. Um, if I remember rightly, I think you and I were having coffee one night in Oscars, which was a gay coffee lounge. Um, when we were approached by the, the management, because uh, a psychologist by the name of Dr. Vivian Cass had been having lots of phone calls from men wanting to know about femininity and she really didn't know what to advise them and thought that maybe if there was a group or a society of transvestites that that would be the best situation. So subsequently we met with Dr. with Vivian Cass and uh, after much discussions and with her help we formed the organisation that we that is still running today that we have now um, based basically at uh, the Gay Society headquarters in Perth. How's the actual screening structure? Is, there, is it purely a coffee meeting or are there sort of counselling? There's, there's both, Nikki. There is a, a, 
a counselling service by means of the telephone. We do advertise.